So in today's video, we're gonna be looking at the six slot server rack battery cabinet from EG4. And we'll also be looking at the LifePower 4 server rack battery from EG4 as well. And we'll be putting the two together, assembling the cabinet and getting it hooked up. So the first thing you're gonna notice is that the server rack cabinet is way bigger than the wall mount battery. Now, this battery is only 14.3 kilowatt hours and you can fit 30 kilowatt hours of batteries inside of this cabinet. So a little over twice as big, but I'm gonna guess like the footprint and the size, this is almost three times the amount of space that it's gonna take up than this battery. So it's all really gonna depend on each person's location like and how much room they want for expansion later on. But if you have plenty of wall space, you might wanna go with the wall mount batteries. It'll keep, it'll take up less floor space overall. But if you have less wall space and you don't mind the cabinet sticking out in the room, the, you know, the server rack cabinet may be the better choice for you. So the battery cabinet, it is lockable if that's important to you. So down each side, they have this panduit covering up a bus bar. So I think this is a 600 amp bus bar, I believe. So there's one of these bus bars on each side. So one is the positive, one is the negative. And there's plenty of screws already self-tapped in here to be able to hook up your batteries. So this cabinet does come assembled except for the feet. Well, I guess I should say casters, not feet. And you just have to attach them with four bolts. And this is called a foot caster because it has this leveling foot that you can extend down and set the cabinet in place and level it up. So I do think that that's a nice feature. I'd like to be able to buy some of these, I think, for some of my other equipment. So this cabinet has a total of 15 knockouts on it for you to run your battery cables through, your communication cables, and ground wires. So that gives you an overview of the battery cabinet. Let's go ahead and look at the LifePower 4 battery. So this is the new version of the LifePower 4 battery. It's been around for years. It's been probably one of the most popular server rack batteries. It's, a, it's always been like a budget battery. And with the new version, they've added, um, basically I think the build quality has improved, but they've added some features and stuff to it that you have in on the, like the non-budget batteries. Like the only thing this thing seems to be missing is probably a screen. So as we look at the front of the battery, you can see you have a breaker here on the left-hand side, and this will trip with the total rapid shutdown that EG4 has. It also has an on-off button over here to boot up and power up the battery. They've also changed the handles on here. They now fold, so you can use them to install the battery and then you can fold them back out of the way. So you've got one dip switch to set your communication protocol. You've got another one to set the address for the ID of the battery. Then you have a CAN bus port, which it didn't have previously. It has RS-485, then your battery communication. You also have state of charge LEDs and you have some status LEDs. Let's go ahead and open this up and peek inside. So when you look at the battery, you can see you have all these cell holders in here helping hold the batteries neatly in place. They've got little pieces of bus bar connecting all the batteries together. It's all laid out really nice. And you can see the positive wire comes out here, goes through the main breaker on the front and then up to the terminal blocks. You can see that the negative wire, it actually comes through here. It goes through the BMS, the battery management system, and then out over to the negative terminal block. And you can see that the battery management system, the circuit board in here, is encapsulated in this little cage right here. It's protected, it's got plenty of space. Everything in here just looks very well built. So if you look at the back side of the lid, you can see there's two fire arresters in here. I believe that's another improvement that they have made. And this battery is certified UL9540A, and that is the fire safety test. And there's some states that may require it, maybe some locations that may require that certification to be able to install a battery in your residence. I don't think there's very many places right now, but that's probably something that's coming in the future. So I believe the earlier version of this battery had a five-year warranty. This version has a 10-year warranty, and it's also rated at greater than 6,000 cycles to 80% depth of discharge. So I think that just means that they have upgraded battery cells in here. They can do more cycles, they can last longer. 
So with the amount of addresses you can set this battery to, you can parallel up to 64 of these batteries together. And this is a 5.12 kilowatt hour battery. So if you had 64 of them, you'd have over 327 kilowatt hours, probably way more than what anybody would need. So full disclosure, Signature Solar did send me this battery to be able to test out. So in turn, I, I ended up ordering and purchasing the server rack cabinet to put it in. And hopefully over time, I'll slowly get a collection of server rack batteries and I'll have a mobile cabinet that I can move around to be able to test out some of the solar equipment. So we'll go ahead, we'll get the cover put back on here and then we'll get it installed in the cabinet. So this battery weighs right at 100 pounds. Definitely something you might need like a lift cart to help install it. So the cabinet came with a bag of screws to be able to bolt these down. And all of these holes are already pre-threaded. You don't need any of those cage nuts to pop in to be able to screw to. This is definitely a lot better than a lot of server rack cabinets if you've ever messed with them. I already pre-charged this battery before we started. And it did come with some short battery cables made specifically to be able to use in this cabinet. So I'm gonna connect the battery cable to this bolt right here. So my battery cable is gonna go right about there. So I just need to fold one of these tabs back, maybe two of them, and then I can put my battery cable in there. So I did add a ground wire from the ground point on the battery over to the ground bolt on the case. And then at the very top here, there is a ground lug. And from this lug right here, you'll just have to run a ground wire out to your electrical ground. So now I need to run battery cables from the negative and positive bus bars in this cabinet. I need to bring that over and tie it into the negative and pos positive bus bars on this battery so that everything's tied together. So if you would connect battery cables up here at the top of each one of these bus and run them across and you had a whole stack of batteries in here, what would happen over time is that these batteries would slowly drift apart from each other. The, the state of charge would slowly change and they all wouldn't match. And that's because, because there's a greater distance from the bottom battery to get the power over here than there is the top battery. And you wouldn't think that that would even happen considering this is basically a straight copper bus. It's all the same conductivity, but just because of the, maybe the slight resistance difference and the slight distance difference, over time, these batteries will slowly drift apart from each other in their state of charge. So what people have done to prevent that is they normally attach one battery cable to the top of a bus and they'll do the opposite battery cable at the bottom of the bus. And what that does, if you have all six batteries in here, it will help them uh, drain more evenly and they won't drift apart from each other as bad. So that's what I plan on doing to hook this up. So I'll probably put my positive cable down here at the bottom and I'll probably put my negative cable over there at the top. And then hopefully I can get these to reach because I didn't go and buy any extra cable. All I have is some of these pre-made short cables and hopefully we can at least make one of these work to be able to test it out. And I know putting these cables on that way isn't gonna help me at all, only having one battery. But I figure over time, I'm gonna put more and more batteries in here, so I might as well hook it up the way I, I would need to in the future. All right, got the battery cables hooked up, so I got the positive there at the bottom, and I was able to get the negative up here at the top of the other bus bar. 
Now for our battery communication, we've got dip switch number one down, and that is for EG4 Lux Power uh, communication. And then over here on the address, the other battery is battery one. This battery is gonna be battery two. So I switch down the second dip switch. So now I'm gonna plug a cable from the battery communication on the wall mount battery into the Life Power 4 battery. All right, I've got the breaker off, but I'm gonna go ahead and turn on the on switch so that that boots up. And I'm gonna turn on the bottom battery so it boots up and they should start communicating. All right, we got lights blinking on our communication port, so hopefully that's working. So now I'll go ahead and turn the battery breaker on the inverter and it should start booting up. Okay, the inverter is booted up now and I've got the EG4 app open. And as we scroll down here, it says there are two batteries in parallel, a total of 380 amp hours. So it sees both batteries. It knows the total amount of battery there is. It knows the total state of charge. It's all communicating the way it should. But right now it's really only running off of this one because I haven't turned the breaker on yet. So turn this breaker on. And now we're running off both batteries. So now I'm gonna turn off the, the wall mount battery and we're just gonna run the inverter off of the Life Power 4. And I've got a heat gun plugged into the test panel. We'll kick that on. And now I'll turn off this battery. And there we go. This battery's off. That's the only one running. It's all running just fine. And the funny thing about this is, is it's still communicating. Everything's working just fine because I just turned off the battery breaker, the output from the battery. I didn't actually turn the battery off, so the, banner, the battery management system, it's still booted up. It's still communicating between the inverter and the server rack battery. Everything's working just fine. So I'm gonna go ahead, turn the battery back on. And now we have a bigger battery bank for this inverter. And I know some people were wanting me to do some more testing on this with a bigger battery um, even though this battery, according to the specs, this needs 167 amps of output power from maximum from the battery. And this battery has 200 amps. So this should be plenty big enough for the 12K PV. But now we've got an extra 100 amps of output here as well. So can do a little bit more testing here later in another video. But now that I've got the server rack cabinet, this is gonna be easy for me to wheel around and use as a portable battery for testing other equipment. But the Life Power 4 battery has definitely improved quite a bit since the, uh, since the original battery. And this one, this one has pretty much everything you want except for the screen. So I think this is gonna be a great addition to the shop here. So right now on Signature Solar, this Life Power 4 battery, it's listed for $1,200. But if you use my discount code, that'll knock off another 50. So you can get this for $1,150. And this all welded six slot battery cabinet, this is listed for $550. Now I know my installation here was not the greatest. Um, ideally you would have some type of a flexible conduit or some conduit between this to help protect your cables. And of course you'd have some ground wire go in between it to make sure to ground the cabinet and the batteries. But uh, this is kind of quick installation and this is gonna be kind of a move around and get hooked up to different things. So it's probably never gonna be permanently hooked up. But I think you get the idea of how to put the batteries in there, get everything hooked up. It's a fairly simple setup. It just takes a little bit more space in the room than one of these wall mount batteries. But anyway, guys, I think that's going to be it for this video. So I hope you have a great day, and I'll see you in the next one.